All right, and that's it. It's time for the Riz. How you doing, buddy? We got the Riz, the managing editor of Lions Wire. He's managing editor of Browns Wire. He's managing to watch his son play some basketball right now, and he's just <laughs> barely getting by otherwise. How you doing, brother? <laughs> uh, I'm good. I apologize in advance for the, the noise going on in the background. we got an AAU scrimmage going on, and there's no other place for me to be. So uh, I'm, I'm happy to be with you uh, on, on a little bit of borrowed time here. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, well, we'll make sure we honor your time. Got a couple of quick topics. The first one, I'm going to dive right in for it. Justin Coleman, you know, there's there's something that's kind of evolved since we picked him up. And uh, we were really, you know, it was early in free agency and everything else. And we were talking about how Justin is a really, really great slot corner. He's the guy. He's really going to lock that down. Now all we need is our cornerback, too. And we're in great shape. Free agency, the draft, everything else happened after that. And we're looking around and saying, wait a minute, <laughs> who's who's the cornerback? <laughs> what is Justin Coleman actually going to be our CB2? And as that kind of realization has happened, there's been a narrative change around him where we're talking about he's going to be there and people are like starting to talk about how good he'll be and he's better than people think. And the only thing we've seen from him that's changed since when we first said he's not going to be on the outside and he's a, um, a slot guy is that he's been out there in shorts. What's other than, you know, <laughs> and, 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 the, and the three days I was in Allen park, he wasn't even in that. He was like off on the side working with the injured guys. <laughs> so how did this narrative change? What happened? Is he really going to be a CB two or we got, is T's stepping up? Uh, I, I think the guy that everybody forgets is, is the, the, the guy that we picked up from the Colts. Um, and, and I think that, that, um, I'm blank on his name right now. Um, yes, I mean, Rashawn Melvin, from thank the Raiders you. or yes, yes. He played for the Colts yeah. for a while too. Um, yes, and yeah. was good, he was with, actually the good with the Colts. Right. Right. Um, then he got hurt and then he went to Oakland where everybody goes to die and, and now he's trying <laughs> to revive himself. Um, I, I, it's either him or Coleman that will be the number two outside corner. I'm okay if Coleman proves that he belongs outside. My question would then be, though, who plays inside? Because Melvin cannot play inside. He is an outside guy. At, at that point, are you running a, a straight three safety look where, where Quandre comes up and plays in the slot? Um, if, if there's if there's three receivers on the field and if there's not, you know, he goes back and plays a little With bit of safety. Who being the third safety? Well, you got Tracy Walker, you got him, and, and you got uh, Tavon uh, 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 Wilson. I, I almost called him Tavon Austin. <laughs> I, need, I need sleep, guys. I, I, I'll, I'll Wilson, be honest. Yes. I, I forgot Wilson was still on the team. <laughs> yes. Um, and and I, there, there will be some who will say that Miles Killebrew can fill that. I'll, I'll believe he makes the team when I see it. So, yeah, they, they can do that sort of thing. As long as, it's, as long as it's a meritocracy and Coleman proves that he belongs to be outside, that he's you know, sufficiently better outside than anybody else, I don't have a problem with it. You put your best players on the field. Sure. Um, and, you know, if, if he's better outside than anybody else, I think that's probably a little bit more important than having slot receiver mm-hmm. covered most times because you can find, I don't want, I want to say you can find guys who can cover the slot, but if you're desperate, Diggs can come up and play that. You know, you can, you can plug in, I don't know, Jamal Agnew if he makes the team, which I still don't think is going to happen, but that, uh, that's my little mess. Okay. That's my peccadillo. You know, there's, there's options that you can have inside. Now, the, the problem is that you don't know who that is on the team because Melvin can't. Tabor clearly can't. Oh, my God. Can you imagine he's in the slot? That's, no, no. Oh, <laughs> oh nightmare fuel. I cannot. Uh, so Here's, maybe that's why, honestly, I think it's people should have too much time to, to think about things that aren't going on. Right. Um, and I, and then, you know, that's, I, I'm guilty of stoking those fires myself. Uh, <sighs> but at the same time, you know, I, I, I do think that Lions fans in general underappreciate how good Justin Coleman has been in a defense that is similar in a, in a role, even if he's outside, that's similar to how he's going to be used here. Uh, and, uh, you know, we talked, I, I blanked on Melvin's name. I, I guarantee you that if you asked 50 casual Lions fans, 30 of them couldn't name that Rashawn Melvin is on the team. So yeah. I, you know, I think that's, there, there's a lot of, you know, ignorance and, and ignorance is, is not a bad word. I don't, I don't have the negative connotations with being ignorant no. as I do with being willfully, you know, Ignoring things that are different. <laughs> willfully, willfully ignorant. Um, right. Exactly. I know what you you're saying. No, I follow what you're saying. You the difference ignorant. between <laughs> yes. you know, just not knowing and choosing not to know. 
Yes, exactly. Um, there's, there, those are very different things to me. Um, if somebody calls me ignorant um, because I don't know something, I'm not insulted by that, and I don't think people should be. Um, that that word stick on too negative a, a connotation. But well, I think we, you- we, in general, are ignorant about what is going on at the cornerback. And I think some of that is the fact that we haven't seen these guys yet. And, you know, that, that leads to, you know, it's Detroit. People are going to be down on the team just in general because it's Detroit. And that's, you know, that, that's, that's the media that's speaking to a lot of the people who are, are freaking out about this right now. Well, and you know, the, well, there's a whole lot in there, boy. And, and yeah, there I is. got a lot, I got a lot, I got a lot to draw on here. That we gotta get the only topic there is. Um, <laughs> the thing is, is in shorts and having to write content or create content, right? Um, the difference on the ignorance thing, I'm, I'm trying to put a whole bunch of different things together here. The difference on the ignorance thing is if somebody said you were ignorant about the draft, that would be insulting because you're not and you studied it and you work hard at it. If you're ignorant about the, the, the 17th UDFA possibility from some practice squad obscure European NFL, <laughs> NFL Europe player, that's okay. It's right. okay to be ignorant of that, right? And I think that's yeah, the Yeah, thing. yeah, th- there's good context there. That's good nuance with that. Nuance is the key word. I, I've been in a direct message group today that has been slaughtering uh, Kean Fahey and his quarterback rankings. And uh, nuance is uh, something that's come up quite a bit. In that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, Case, go ahead and uh, and do your riff here on on Coleman. We'll see if we can squeeze in one of these other topics really quick because I know We're there was something that Riz talked about. It was I think really really important. And, uh, okay, real quick. Um, first of all, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I listen to a lot of uh, like Fox Sports Radio in the car, you know, to and from uh, work. And I, they're ignorant of a lot of what's happening in the league. But that's understandable because there's only so much time you've got. And that's it's not their job to know the nuance of every team. It's their that's job. That's correct. That's very and, correct. And, and so, like, it's easy to get upset with them about it. Um, but at the same time, it truly isn't like that's not their job. Their job is to know about the things that are most uh, popular. So, um, yeah. with, uh, with with Justin Coleman, I think there's a few things specifically. First of all, I, I mean, does it make sense to move him outside if the drop off at nickel is so significant without him at nickel um it was the comparative drop-off that's what i'm trying to say uh right. does the, because nickel will probably be the base defense for the lions right. or some version of nickel uh something with you know a, a slot cornerback or a slot you know safety um so if he's able to play you know 75 percent plus snaps that is as valuable position or at least almost as valuable valuable position as the cb2 so does it make sense to take a huge drop off there where we've been killed in the past mm-hmm. on, on on short Enjoy, pass plays absolutely. dink and dunks that that would just sustain drives against us or does it make sense to force teams at least to throw the ball deep where you know you can give where you can put a safety in in double coverage uh against a you know a Rashad Melvin or e- even you know even a tease Tabor uh if you can have a second guy in coverage a- against the guy that he's on then that's you know I, that's uh, that's a, that's a tough call for me. The concept uh, I, of having a non-ideal guy in two positions and trying to cover it versus a non-ideal guy in one position and help him cover. With we went through this period, with yeah. with the Glasgow Ragnow conversation last year, and now we're seeing how that's playing out now, where where it's almost almost a given at this point that that they're swapping because it makes more sense. To, right. Even if Glasgow takes a small step down at guard from what Ragnow is, Ragnow takes a big step up at center in theory. Uh, that that's the basic concept. So, like, where is where? How can you maximize? You know, your total overall situation. And I think you know it. It, it doesn't make sense to it, make any assumption at this point. Any assumption, especially uh, if you if you're looking at Rashad Melvin and and we said you know obviously his time with the Raiders wasn't good. And I'm not suggesting that he's going to be revitalized in Detroit. But there's plenty of reason to think that what was happening in Oakland was not suited to what Melvin was good at. And so at least there's a good opportunity. Frankly, if he could play as well at the number two spot in a scheme that fits him better than what he was doing in, than he did when he was with the Colts, 
um, then we might have our best number two cornerback we've had in a long time. <laughs> right. So, he, he, the hope is that he's uh, he's the new Rasheen Mathis, who was right. sort of in the same boat. A guy who didn't play all that well, um, he had an injury that, that slowed him down, uh, and was looking to, to revitalize his career late. And guess what he did? He gave, he gave the Lions two really good years. If you can get yeah. one year out of, even out of Melvin, I think that's that's work, and that that's a very that can happen. That's that's a credible outcome for this well, year. Melvin the defense will be motivated too. He's on a one year deal, so it's not like that guy is going to necessarily be slacking off. And you have a so, coach right. that can understand that understands the defense pretty well, and probably can get a couple extra years out of a guy. Rashid probably could have done more if they had been able to scheme around with a guy like. Patricia run pulling the levers on that. I, I just feel I always feel better about getting more out of players uh, than otherwise would have under other coaching staffs. Um, okay, can you really quick move on to the? You had a great great story on uh, LionsWire at USA Today dot com and uh, comparing Hawkinson, uh, TJ Hawkinson to uh, a first rounder and. Um, it's not Eric Ebron. It's not Ebron, right? <laughs> and that's one, of course, Lions fans want to go with. We but chatted you, about you, that. You brought in uh, O.J. Howard. And I, yes. ha- I have to say this is terrible, and we're scared because O.J. Howard was never that great in fantasy. <laughs> no, he's not. Well, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, I, I, I had to make the most absurd comparison possible, Riz. <laughs> well, and, but I, I think the context of O.J. Howard joining the Buccaneers is similar. And, and I, I laid out there, you know, Kent Platt and his awesome RAS thing. They're, they're close in that. They're a little bit different. Mm-hmm. But uh, they, they, they are... They are similar enough that that is the guy who you should be comparing him to. And and I was looking, I initially uh, attacked that from a production standpoint. And and I think that Howard, honestly, the, the production that he's had, and I don't have it in front of me, um, but it's it's modest. It's I, I think he's had eight. I think he's had I think he's had f- years of five and six touchdowns and approximately eighty career catches in two years. But again. He's playing with with another a very good tight end, number two tight end in Cam Brait. They have Mike Evans. They have uh, Godwin. They, they had Deshaun Jackson out of the slot. They had a lot of weapons around him where he didn't have to be a featured guy as much as what I think Hawkinson will be in this offense. But in terms of his ability to line up in line, line up and move, line up flexed out, and do a lot of things that, that what, what you saw Hawkinson do very well in college – is similar to what you saw Howard do well in college, and it's translated very. He's a very good player. He gets lost a little bit because, like I said, they had a lot of weapons in Tampa Bay, mm-hmm. uh, and they haven't been good. But he's been re- he's been a really good player. He is a top, I'll, I'll say top eight tight end already after two years. He's had a little bit of an injury issue too, but I, I think he's a guy who can really blossom this year. And and I will be looking at him in fantasy this year because I think they are going to with Bruce Arians as their coach. I think he's going to take off. But I think the the similarities are there for for him to be is a is a, a first round tight end the way that Hawkinson can be. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's a it's a more apt comparison than comparing him to the tired horse that is Eric Ebron because they are very dissimilar players. Yeah. Howard is a lot more like him. He's a guy who can block. He's a guy who blocks well in space. He comes from a more pro style offense. He doesn't have drop problems. He doesn't have concentration problems. He's a mature dude. He's a, he's a weight room worker. There's, there's a whole lot of things that you say about OJ Howard that you would never say about Eric Ebron. And, and you would say those things about TJ Hawkins too. So I, I, I wanted to get that out there and it's gotten a very good response. And I'm happy about that. And, and by the way, uh, I got, I got word from Buccaneers people that they liked it too. So I'm, I'm happy about that. <laughs> hey, all right. At least their quarterback isn't reached, giving any reach arounds to Uber drivers right now. So uh, not, um, not, not, not now. Um, the, 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 the summer's still young. Yeah, it's it's only six o'clock. Give it a couple hours. It'll be dark out. And he'll get back at it. No, that's uh, that's that's something. And, and they did. They had some, the quarterback problems, you know, as I alluded to James, uh, James's uh, situation. And, um, you know, they had Fitz magic going on. But OJ was was in a weird spot there with with what happened. I think you're right about Arians. Arians is a really good thing. For O.J. Howard, I think yeah, he has some, some good potential for us. So, Right. And if you think back to that draft, there were a lot of Lions fans who were convinced we were taking O.J. Howard, too. Yeah. Um, and so it, it would it would make sense that he's he's a Quinn type. That that makes sense, too. And I, I probably should have put that into the, the column, but they don't like us to do speculative crap like that at, 
USA Today for whatever reason. Oh, well. Just the facts, man. Yeah, Just the fun. facts. <laughs> All right. Awesome. I know we're uh, running up against some time here for you, Riz. I appreciate you, you, you doing this for us. Just, just really quick. You're still making it to the party, right? Oh, heck yeah. I've, I've already cleared my calendar out. I, in fact, I have, uh, I have my travel dates planned out. I will, I will share them with you off the air, but, uh, awesome. I will be there. Um, the two practices around the camp uh, and the party as well. So, uh, I'll be there for a lot of time. If people are hanging out for, for more extended time, um, I will be staying at my mother-in-law's apartment in Canton, right by the Ikea. Doors I do open. not want to stay with my so mother-in-law. Party at your mother-in-law's so, apartment is what you're saying. <laughs> I do not want to stay with my mother-in-law. <laughs> oh, <okay>. So um, <laughs> if you're in town, please hit me up because I'll need something to go somewhere to go. So Case is going to be there too. I'm, we're thinking of doing like some lunches and dinner tours as we're we're getting there. And uh, if you want to Sweet. jump around. Uh, got some great places to eat to take you, Riz, if you want. I can uh, give you guys the tour, a little, little of our own taste of Detroit. Nice. That sounds awesome. All right. Awesome, buddy. Thanks a lot for joining us in the midst of all you got going on, and uh, we'll talk again soon, all right? All right. Thanks, guys. All right.